All right, so we have a problem here, and that is the widget problem. They have three shifts. They want us to tell them how much the total amount of widgets they did per day, and they want to know want to know what the average per shift is. So we're going to have to break this down into assumptions, input, calculations, and output. Okay, we always start with output first because that's the easiest. And what they want is they want the total um, total widgets for the day. So let's call that uh, total production. And the other thing they want to know is the average per shift. So we'll call that shift average. What we call it is not important as long as we're consistent in what we call it um, as we use it. So I'm just going to call it those two things. The next thing we have to do is figure out where we're going to get these two from. And either they're going to be calculated or they're going to be provided to us, which means input, or it's values that never change, which means they're assumptions. Well, these are obviously calculations, so we're just going to go ahead and copy this and paste it into our calculations. And then we work from the bottom and work our way up. So the first thing we want to figure out is what is our average for each shift. And we get that by taking the total production, which is right here, and then dividing that by the number of shifts. And we'll just type in number of shifts. All right, so total production comes from the result of this calculation. But where does the number of shifts come from? Well, it's either going to be input or assumptions. So either they're going to tell us how many shifts there are, or we're going to assume that there's a constant number of shifts. And in this one, they tell us there's three shifts every day. And that sounds constant to me. So we're going to say, I'm going to copy number of shifts and paste it up into the assumptions. I'm going to say number of shifts is equal to three. And then six months down the road, if they decide that they're going to go uh, scale back to two shifts, then a person can come in here and just change this three to a two, and everything will work perfectly. All right, so now I have to figure out, <coughs> how do I figure out what the total production is? And that is if I take the first shift total, and I add that to the second shift total, and I add that to the third shift total, then I will have my total production. Notice that I'm small first word and then capital for the second word and that's called common notation and I didn't do it right here so I'm gonna have to fix this and make that a capital O and then fix this up here because we have it it's the same thing in both and we're gonna make it so that the second third fourth fifth word uh, has a capital letter and again it's called common notation and it makes our programming a lot, little easier now I have to determine where am I going to get first shift, second shift, third shift, and it's either going to be something that they have to tell us or something that never changes. And we know that the, the amount of widgets they make per shift changes all the time. So that means that it has to be provided to us. So I'm going to copy first shift and paste it in. Second shift, copy that, paste it in. Very important that you copy and paste these, not retype them, because if you do, um, you're going to be adding errors into your solution. So you want to make sure that you copy and paste whenever possible, because that makes sure that this is these are all identical to each other, and I don't have to worry about any types of typos. All right, so now we have it. We have all three. So we did that in 4 minutes and 10 seconds. So let's go ahead and do the... Um, next step which is the um, human algorithm I'm gonna do it on the same file but uh, most of the time you want to do it on a separate file but how we do it is I simply oh we forgot one thing we have to finish up our assumptions right so our assumptions also is where we document scope uh, or what we what's going to be part and what not not part of our solution so one of the assumptions I'm going to make here is that um, uh, only three shifts and I'm going to ask the user uh, only three shifts right and if he says oh no no sometimes we have a fourth shift 
well, then I'm going to have to change my solution to match the fact that they might have a fourth shift. But in this case, they said, oh, yeah, only three shifts. Um, only one facility is another that we can use. So I asked, well, only one facility, right? And he goes, oh, well, actually, we have four facilities all making that, and we want this running on all four, and then total up the total for all four facilities. Well, I didn't say anything about that. So um, I'm going to make sure that if I'm assuming that there's only one facility, that that's actually going to be true. All right, so let's go ahead and do the human algorithm. I'm going to go ahead and copy, starting with my first constant down to my output. That's why you want to put these constants at the very bottom of your assumptions. So I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to paste it into my human algorithm. And then I'm just going to go ahead and fix this. Um, and it's very easy to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is that. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy input. Let me put a colon at the end of it first. And a space, space. I'll copy that. And then I'll press delete and move it up. Press delete. And then I'll put input in front of each one of these. All right, so that's my input. We don't use calculations because that's just the math, and since there's an equal sign, it's uh, obvious what it is. But output also, we're going to put a colon, space, space. I'm going to copy that. And then I press delete to move up the first one, and then paste in output. That's it. That's as easy, that's as um, simple as you can get. But you're already thinking, well, what was the point of all that? Well, once we have it in this format, we're also going to get rid of all the spaces between the words, because we're going to be using that these as names of places in memory later on. So if I go ahead and get rid of all of these spaces, then I can copy and paste these into my flowchart, which I'm going to create next. I'm also going to allow you, if you wanted to do this in your problem statement, normally we don't because our human would not like to you have to look at words this way. But for this class, I'm going to allow problem statements to also have no spaces if you want to wish to do so. It makes, it, makes your life a little bit easier and makes everything a little bit faster. So I've just replaced all the spaces, and now we have a perfect human algorithm. And you can see it's a fairly small one. Um, it is, you could have probably coded this without having to do any of the other steps. But the reason why we do the steps in these simple problems is so that you build up um, your skill so that when we get to the more difficult ones, you'll have no problem being able to break that down into a problem statement. So I recommend that you just follow along the steps uh, just like I have done here, uh, and you'll find that programming is very easy. All right, on to our flowchart.